Welcome back to another video of Math Time School. So in this video, we will go over um, st statements and reasonings in a two-column proof. Okay, so let's begin. So let's say I'm I'm going to be using this triangle as an example. So in a statement, statement, and then proof. Okay, so let's say that you're told that line L is a bis is a perpendicular bisector. You say you were told that, so you you were given that, so the proof would be given because you were told that's true. Okay, so. Uh, you're told that it was a perpendicular bisector. And so you can say that these two angles, so I'm going to name this angle 1 and angle 2. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Because the, that, the, the proof would be definition of a bisector. Angle bisector. Because an angle bisector bisects an angle. It's in this name. So that proof would be definition of angle bisector. So you, let's say you're told that let's say this is C. Name this A and B. You're told that C is the midpoint of B of AB. So for all the givens, you just write them before you write anything else. So all givens go here. So all the givens would go before any um, statements you make. Okay, so you're told that C is the midpoint of length, um, line segment AB. So you can say that AC line, so you'd have that dash over it to show that the line. Line AC is congruent to B BC. Plus, again, def, you'd have the def of, definition of midpoint. A midpoint splits a segment into two congruent uh, pieces, so it would be midpoint. Okay, so you're told that L is a perpendicular bisector. And then so you can see that these two angles are right angles. So you can see that AC, angle ACB, and BC, BC, whoops. Okay, I didn't name this. Let me name that D, yeah. BC, uh, B, C, D, are right angles. So that this would be definition of perpendicular bisector. So make sure to write the full thing. I'm just abbreviating it because I don't want this video to be too long. Okay. So when you write um, a new statement and uh, reasoning, make sure to add a line below it uh, so you know uh, uh, which statement is to which uh, proof. Or it's not necessarily proof, it's reasoning, yeah. Reason. Okay, well actually, statement and proof, yeah. Okay, it's a statement and proof column. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so let's see. So let's look at a few other properties. So, do you, um, so we can say that line uh, DC is congruent to DC, right? Because it's itself. So what property? So we're going into postulates now, actually. So what postulate would say that DC line line, uh, line segment DC is a congruent to DC? That would be the reflexive reflexive property, stating that something is equal to itself. Okay, so let's say you had that a a you you said that you were given that a is congruent to B. Okay, so the the substitution property states that 
for any value of b, you can substitute in a. So let's say you have b plus c is equal to 180. You can say a plus c is equal to 180. Statement. And then that proof would be substitution. Okay, so let's say, okay, so another uh, property. Uh, let's say, so let's say you're told that, let's say you're given that A is congruent to B and that B is congruent to C. You can say that A is congruent to C because of the transitive property. Transitive property. So let's say like A equaled like a thousand. Or let's say like A equaled mm, 60 degrees. Uh, a, equal, a equal to B, which is 60 degrees. And uh, actually, where am I going with this? Um, so oh wait, let's say that A mm -hmm. is congruent to 100. And that 100 is congruent to congruent to C. You can say that A is congruent to C. Yeah, I just, you, I just chose to use an actual value for B. Okay, so one more, I believe. So the one more property. So this is the transitive property of equality. Say, so let's say that a plus c is equal to b plus c. You know that a is equal to b. Let's say congruent. So you know that a is congruent to b because if you were to just subtract the c's, you get a is equal to b. Or you could just say transitive property of equality okay so now on to postulates so let's say so let's, I'm just gonna name this uh, angle one and two and let's say that angle that this that this whole angle that this whole angle whoops uh, let me undo that so uh, let's say this whole angle is, I don't know, let's say it's, let's say the whole angle is 90 degrees and this is 45. You can say that too is congruent to 45 degrees because of the addition postulate, or I'm sorry, the subtraction postulate, because you're doing because 90 minus 45 is equal to 45 because you're trying to get that point. If you know the whole and you know a part, you can just subtract the part to get the other part. So 45. That would be, that proof would be subtraction postulate. Sorry. Okay. Let's say you, you weren't told that the whole, the, the, um, that angle was 90 degrees and you're told that these two are 45. You would say that um, these that the whole angle is 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees because of the addition posture. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now let's let's see. I believe I went through everything. Uh, let me check. Okay. So I would like to uh, tell you guys one more thing. So th there's this very important term called CP CTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So let's say you prove that two triangles are congruent. Mm -hmm. So let's say you prove that these two triangles. I'm just gonna just to make it uh, quick. I would say this triangle is called A and B. Triangle. You see, you prove that triangle A is congruent to triangle B. So, and and then so you could say that these two angles. The angles that I just do are congruent. So let's name this six, and let's name this one nine. I don't know random numbers. So six angle six is congruent to angle nine. So the the proof behind this would be C P C T C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's how you can say uh, two parts are congruent. So you can see that this this segment is congruent to this segment. Because of CP, CTC. Okay. So. Let's. 
let's do um let's do one problem so i i saved it here so where is it okay right here okay so uh we're told that a b is congruent to a c and we have to prove that angle b is congruent to c so a b is congruent to a, uh a c first statement would be and the first statement and the reasoning being given okay so construct uh angle bisector of a so this is what that angle bisector is so the reasoning behind that would be uh every angle has one angle bisector yep so you can say that bad this angle is congruent to this angle because that is the definition of an angle bisector so you know that that angle is congruent and this angle is congruent. Okay. And you're also told that AB is congruent to AC. Okay. So now you can say that AD is congruent to a, uh, AD because of the reflexive property. Okay. Now, since you know that one angle is congruent, a side and then another side, you can see that the, the posture you can use to prove that these two triangles are congruent is side because you know one side. An angle in between and then another side. So side angle side partially. But we're not done yet. We're trying to prove that B is congruent to C. And the reason uh, so we'd say B is congruent to C and the reasoning behind that would be C P C T C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So this form of proofs is called a two column statement proof. So this is this will probably be um the kind of proofs uh, you will be doing in class. So, uh, good luck. Make sure to hit the bell to be notified of new episodes. Thank you for watching and goodbye.